Well, greetings, people loved by God. It's Monday, the 10th of May, 2021 already. And Pastor Steve Woodfin from Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. This is morning prayer. A familiar story today, but a, a story that is always a joy to hear because it, it goes to the heart of the love of God the Father for each and every one of us. Well, we begin by God's grace alone in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Psalm 103. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion for his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. I want to just read that three or four more times. <laughs> And one quick thing that I like to point out whenever I see these words that our sins are separated from us as far as the east is from the west. That was intentionally chosen because God knew that one day we would figure out the globe and how things worked and how we lived on a big brown ball and how if you go north, eventually you go south again. There's some kind of a connection between north and south. One turns into the other. But east and west, they never ever touch. If you go east, you always go east. If you west, if you go west, you always go west. And so he chose sins separated as far as the east is from the west to make sure we always knew that they would never ever be near us again. Okay, so now the classic parable, the story of the prodigal son. And Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. A story that repeats itself again and again, right, in our, in our human history. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his field to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring the fattened calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now, of course, there's many more verses where we hear about the brother who says, hey, I've always been here and you're not celebrating me? How come he gets all this and I get nothing? That'll be for another day because we want to look just at how this father treats the son who took his share. Now, the first thing we do is we shake our head and say, wait a minute, the son asked for his inheritance before the father died and the father said, okay. I mean, think about how that would cripple financially the father who had to sell off uh, half of his his properties in order to satisfy this son's request and yet out of great love for him he does it and then when the son completely messes up in every way well you know he treats him right and this is how the father treats us and this is why i love to talk about this parable because this is our reality now understand when that son returns that's the picture of repentance. That's the picture of true faith that God has given us in Jesus Christ. Because repentance literally means to turn around. And that son 
who had lived that lifestyle where he squandered all the fortune, where he, I'm sure, had lots of friends as long as he had money, and then as soon as the money was gone, hey, where'd everybody go, right? And there he was alone. He recognized, by faith, as we would, you know, the error of his ways, and he turned around. He came back to the Father. And the Father treats him like a hero and a king and gives him everything, gives him the best of everything. And so too, when we repent, when we turn around, by God's grace, through faith, because there, there can be no repentance outside of true faith, when we come back to the Father again and again, it's not the Father um, shaming us and saying, oh, you're, you're back for more forgiveness, huh? Okay, I guess I'll give you some forgiveness. But don't let it happen again. And then we come back again. Oh, you, you did it again, didn't you? There's no, there's no guilt. There's no shame. There's this Father running to us, meeting us on the road when we beg for forgiveness, essentially ignoring it because he's so busy making sure we receive all of his very best. The robe, the ring, the fattened calf, the kingdom. God gives us everything because of the faith that he's given us in Jesus Christ. Let that be a picture today that you keep in your mind that that is our reality day by day, moment by moment, that as he calls us to repent and accomplishes it too through the Holy Spirit, then too he runs to us in joy and gladness and says, oh, my son, my daughter, they were lost, but now they're back. And once again, I give them my very best. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you stood afar off, waiting to see your prodigals appear at the gate. Then running to us, you overwhelmed us with grace and invited us to sit at table to rejoice at our homecoming. Help us to repent of our sins and strip us of every thought that we might merit our salvation. Then bring us home to be with you at the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And let's pray Luther's morning prayer as well. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Have a glorious sun drenched, as you can see in the background, as we see the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sun. But have a glorious day in the Lord, and I'll see you tonight at 845.